my family we are back in the kitchen again today and we are actually going to be doing mexican food i have been craving i guess i'm i'm going ahead and doing my food that i really want to do before not this week but next week thursday when my life's going to change for a little while so look forward because i am going to be making some cubanos from cuba um using fresh milled flour and today we are actually going to be doing some tacos however not just ordinary way i'm actually going to be making some homemade tortillas made out of masa now the difference and why i chose to do this i could have went with the already homemade corn tortillas however when i read all the ingredients that were in it it is not something I wanted. Uh, I think it had uh, guam gum and all this other junk. And so I got to thinking why, just why. Honestly, I trashed them. They were old anyways. And then uh, I could have went with the low-carb version, but hey, we know how that goes too. Um, so here's what we did. We are looking at masa. When I read masa... There's only three ingredients, water, lime, and corn. And that's exactly what I would be doing if I took dent corn and made my own fresh milled masa. How that is, it's called nextalization. It's where your dent corn soaks overnight or 24 hours in a pickling lime where it helps break up that outer casing you dehydrate it and then you mill it well this is the exact same thing and I made sure of it but it's already done for me so I do have some dent corn that one day I will do that for myself because that is a yellow corn and all I can find in the store is the white flower version or the white corn version so we are going to work with what we have now until I'm able to get my pickling lime and start doing my own. I've got five pounds worth it. And we're going to see actually how this does for my husband's blood sugar first. If it's going to be worth even doing that. And this is a way to do it. There are no preservatives within this. So I'm going to be able to test it out that way. So that's what we're going to do. First we're going to go ahead and start making our homemade tortillas. And then from there, we are going actually to be cooking outside today on the um, Blackstone griddle. And I'm going to show you a recipe that I had found online um, from the Hungry, believe it or not, this man's name is the Hungry Heifer. And I'm going to tell you, or the Hungry Hussy. And amazing. Oh, Lord have mercy, he made my mouth drool. We're going to do the same thing on this homestead. So, let's go to it. Okay, so I have two cups of masa. And by the way, y'all, it's going to be a very busy day because at the same time, as I'm watching this bubbled over, I'm still waiting for my sourdough to come to a peak because I'm getting ready to do an actual sourdough um, bread. And I'll be making some Cubana bread from Fresh Milled. So, we got it. A lot of bread to do this week and uh, a lot of it is definitely not from around here we're looking at the Mediterranean and all over the place so back to here so we have two cups of my masa now I am using hot water it requires according to the package about one and a half cups of hot water or just water so but just like the fresh milled, there's a trick to this, and I have been learning that. So we're going to actually do this a little at a time, and then we're going to let it hydrate. Just like I do with my um, wheat berries after they're fresh milled, I let it sit for 10 minutes. We're going to actually do the same thing and look at the hydration rate for this. So for right now... I am actually going to be adding, I want to set aside, measure out a cup and a half of my, let's go ahead with this one right here, of my hot water. 
because I really don't want to go over it if I don't have to and I can go under if and that would be absolutely fine because we live in a humid state so it could not it could change I might not even need that much I'm gonna put this back in here now I'm gonna get me right now a fork I'm just gonna add this a little at a time and I'm going to show you the difference of what I was taught and how to actually make these. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up. And yes, I love this bread bowl so much, y'all. I'm going right back to it. So this is definitely showing me I need more of my hot water. There we go. I'm going to incorporate all of this flour in here. And I am a hands-on gal. I can't help it. So, yeah, and this is a bit warm. But it's the only way I'm going to find the true hydration. Going by fork, I can't feel it. And it makes sense, y'all. So, yep, it's starting to stick really good. I mean, like I said, I might not even need this. I'm just going to come through and just keep adding all of my... Ah, here we go again, see? Hang on a minute. Let me get these out of my way. I keep forgetting about that hook. Now this is supposed to make 16 to 18 tortillas. We're not doing super big. And I'm definitely going to need a little bit. I can tell by this texture it's too crumbly. So definitely going to need a little bit more water. I'd rather be able to add a little. Now we're going to go ahead and come in here, mix this all up again. Ah, yes, we're starting to do this. And it's going to be interesting the way I was shown how to do this. Uh, I'd never thought about it before, but it absolutely makes perfect sense, y'all. I'm going around gathering all of my flour up, just like so. And then we're going to take our tea towel and we're going to cover this up and let this sit for 10 minutes. Now I will find out after all of this masa absorbs all the liquid if we need more liquid or if we're going to need a little bit more masa. So I'm going to hook and pretty much I'm going to wait right now. So we'll set this up. We're going to cover this up, and then we will be back in 10 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, we will be back in 10 minutes and see where we're at, if we need to add more or not. So, I'm going to set our timer. And we'll be back. Okay, so our 10 minutes have just gotten up, and we're going to test this and I'm going to tell you right now I already know what I'm looking at so how can we tell if this was the right consistency we will take our masa and roll it into a ball and it should feel like a play-doh now it's pressure will tell everything first of all it doesn't stick so that's a good thing that means we don't have a whole lot of um, moisture in it but at the same time we don't have enough moisture because you see these edges where they're cracked this means it doesn't have enough so we need to actually add just a little bit more water to our masa we are looking for a smooth texture on this so i'm going to take my water and mix this up some more until we get what we need here in our hydration although I know that I'm not going to need all of that water here I can tell you that already yep and that's starting to feel a little better don't be afraid to get your hands dirty y'all because it's the only way you're going to actually find out the texture to your masa especially if you're making corn authentic corn tortillas that's got a nice play-doh feeling to it now we'll test this in just a minute 
find out where we are because we don't want a dry tortilla and we don't want it too wet either it's going to stick to everything and now we're going to go ahead and take a nice size ball again we're going to roll this roll this up oh, that feels that's about right yes and there we go it's slightly just let's see Nope, y'all, I think we got it. It's got a smooth edges, just a little bit more, just not a whole lot, just a tad bit more, and we've got this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just that much, and that's it. We're not going to add any more to this, so I'm going to work this in here. And that's how you know if you have enough or if you have too much or not enough. So if you had too much and it starts sticking, you just want to just sprinkle a little at a time of your masa until you get the right consistency. And how you know if you have too much hydration or water in your masa is when you go to roll it into a ball and you press it in your hands and it actually sticks to you. You have way too much uh, water in your mix so you're going to have to add some masa to dry that up and then I'm showing you right now what it's like to not have enough so that's the difference in that okay now we got this incorporated again so now and it's feeling really well we're going to try one more time roll this up and perfect we have no, well, see, now see what I mean about it sticking just a little bit? Go ahead and just keep rolling this in here. Because that was just a little, so we're not far off. I just need to work that water into my dough a little bit more. Because we don't want it sticking at all. Okay, I'll try it again. nice beautiful that's it we finally made it y'all i got a smooth edge it does not stick to my hand so we got this now we're going to take this i am going to take my tea towel and dampen my tea towel put it over this so i can get my kamal heated up right now and we're going to make some tortillas One second to get this dampened off. Okay, now we're just going to leave this sit here for just a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to get everything else ready. And I'm going to show you how we're going to now make our tortilla. So I'm going to set this aside. Get our press ready. Right here, we have our Kamal on the stove heating up. And I'll show that to you. Now... To keep this from sticking, and I keep these at all times, I took a freezer bag and cut the circumference of a circle around my press. And I will show you this is what we use to keep it from sticking to this tortilla press. This one here is a cast iron press. And then we have our cast iron kamal, which I'll have to see if I can do this without. Yeah, let me hang on a minute. There we go. And then we have our cast iron kamal heating up so that we can make our tortillas. Now I'm also going to get a plate with another um, tea towel so we can keep our tortillas warm. Because these are also going to go outside and cook on the griddle as well. Man, wait till y'all see what we got coming up in store. I'm also going to take some of these tortillas and we're going to fry them into chips. Because we are fixing to make homemade salsa. And we are going to be doing some stuffed jalapenos. Those are going on the griddle as well. So that we can get that smoky um, flavor to roasted jalapenos stuffed on the griddle. So this is our supper for tonight, y'all. 
I can't wait. I'm super excited because I've been wanting a good Mexican food. And yeah, this gentleman that I watched this morning just sparked out a hallelujah. Let's, I know it's for dinner tonight. So I'm having a cheat night, y'all. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to wait till this heats up and then we will be back. Okay, y'all. So it is time to start making it. And I just made my first one. So now show you how we do this we will take a golf ball size masa mix place it flatten somewhat down onto the tortilla press bring down my plate press it down now these do have a way a tendency to have thickness on one side from the other so what we take it and flip it around lay it down Press it in. I will usually take it this way as well so I make it nice rounded. Lightly press it. Now, you do not want to, yeah, one more time because this one here, there. Um, you do not want to just rip this off. You want to take and peel this back really nicely, just like so. Same thing on the other side as you lay it down. Pull it back just a little pull it here now you do not want to just take and flop it on top of your kamal take your edges very gently place it on your kamal just like so that and then we are going to cook this for about 45 seconds per side now i like to take mine and then you can do this just a little bit spritzing with the steam and i'm going to show you because if you know if you've got the right um consistency as far as pressing your tortilla it will get somewhat of a puffiness to it so we'll see if we got this and it's now got a good seasoned pan so you see it lifting off of here so it is definitely cooking it When you start smelling that corn cooking on your tortilla, you flip it over just like so. And now, beautiful. I'm going to take and press a little bit of steam, press it down some. Yes. Make sure it's cooking. Like I said, it's about 45 seconds per side. You do not want to do too much because you don't want to make them into a tostada. Although you could. It's definitely starting to bubble up. Yeah, there we go with that puff. Yes, I'm starting to see this come up, y'all. it to my other side and there it goes just like a pillow you see that happening beautiful ah yes give you a close-up y'all ah, of our pillow yes so we know that that one's done well yep that one's completely finished <laughs> be right back Okay, so, yeah, that one was completely finished, y'all. So, I'm glad I did the demonstration because a trash can got to eat that one. Not cool. So, anyways, we're going to go ahead and continue on with our next one, the same process. We're going to go ahead and press them out. Then we're going to put them in our Kamal. Once we get finished, we will come back and show you the next step into making our supper tonight. So, I'm just going to go ahead and keep pressing this. Flip it over. Press it this way. One more time this way. Bring it off of here. Peel it back here. Lay it on our pan. Cook 45 seconds. Slightly spray the mist for the steam. And we will be back once we get all of our tortillas made. Okay, y'all, so we have now finished all of our beautiful tortillas. 
and are they pliable absolutely now one thing i have learned even with the towel or in a container if you happen to have um, a tortilla holder you want to be able to um, keep that moisture in there a good way to do that is you can just use a spray bottle and just spray them just a tad bit and you can see these are absolutely pliable we are definitely going to use these tonight however this is way too much for two people so I've been wanting to also make some tortilla chips now instead of using the store-bought tortilla chips which I was so tempted to do I am actually going to go through our homemade find the most uh, the smallest and the most odd looking ones and we are actually going to fry these up and make our own homemade tortillas out of this the chips so I'm actually going to go ahead and separate these and I am going to make up a section right now just to lay these on here that's a small one here's a real small one see things like this that are which I find you know I can freeze these as well and I want some of these for supper tonight or for uh for lunch for hubby's lunch tomorrow so wow these are these are hard to there's a small one here's one somewhat that one can be done so can this one see we have two this they would make about three each on this we need some for hubby's lunch that's a small one and then these two right here so this turned out perfect these two for lunch this for supper and then these we will turn into chips so i'm gonna set these aside i'm gonna keep these slightly warm put these in the microwave because we are going to be using these outside here for a while i just want to keep them pliable and these we're just going to cover up for right now because we're going to cut them and we are going to fry them so i'm going to get my small pan ready with some oil so we can fry these into homemade chips for our salsa okay y'all so oh my goodness these are delicious i tested one earlier with my hummus and the flavor is phenomenal versus what i have been buying at the store so i'm gonna show you how i cut these i stack them up directly in half i will fold them over cut these directly in half again and i have all of my tortilla shells just like this Now this one here, do the same thing because it was just a slightly bigger. I'm gonna cut that edge there, and then directly in the middle, and I have three sections of perfectly done chips. Now we have our oil that is hot. We're going to add our chips to this. And cook these until they are crispy and golden brown on both sides. I'm going to try and bring you over here so you can see this. There you go. So we're going to let these sit here for just a little bit. Flip them. Nice golden brown. You can use whatever oil you, you want to use for this round here which I don't use very often, but we are using vegetable oil on this one. And I just want to keep turning these just a little bit until they are completely done. Just like so. And then we'll put them in our paper towels. Oops like this strain them in our paper towels and then we're going to dust them with a little bit of salt and i'm going to tell you the grocery stores tortillas i'm really glad i decided to do it this way because wow i have never done this before y'all with corn this is the first time i'm making my own corn chips 
and these taste phenomenal compared to grocery stores so I am really glad I made this decision to do this I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing the rest of our chips and then we'll come back for our next step in the supper look y'all gorgeous chips and this was not made from the tortillas from the store these were actually just as you saw made from the homemade masa that we had made our shells for for our tacos tonight oh superb flavor okay y'all so now on to the jalapenos now we are going to be using four uh really nice sized jalapenos we're going to prepare these for halves and again these are not going to be cooked in the oven we are going to put these outside on our griddle and we're going to char the skins to get that nice roasted pepper flavor with this so i can't wait that'll be the first time we do that our filling we are doing half the recipe but it is actually the recipe will be eight ounces of cream cheese about a cup of cheese cheddar or any kind that you absolutely want uh, three tablespoons of green onions one garlic minced I'm going to go ahead and take this here and it calls for some cooked bacon I am not going to put bacon in ours but you can put bacon in yours if you choose to. So we're just not going to be doing that with this one. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest of this already now mangled up inside. Garlic into here so we can get our garlic flavors. All right. And we are now going to add about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to mix this up really well. We're going to set it aside while we prepare for our jalapenos. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed up. Once I get this mixed up really good, we'll be right back. Okay, so our mix is already done. Now we're going to be having our peppers. Don't go in the kitchen without your gloves when you're working with a pepper trust me I learned the hard way I don't ever do that anymore we have our peppers which are now been washed and I'm just going to take my knife and just run it right down the center of our pepper and now I'm going to take a small knife and take out the veins and the seeds to our pepper Bowl. And remove all of this center core. Just like so. Beautiful. And take just a little bit more of this out. There we go, right there. And that's it. Now we take our filling. We come in here, pop some of our filling in here, spread it across, and we are ready for the next one. Just like that. Nice, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of our peppers, and then we're going to get ready to go outside to the griddle. I am excited for this meal, y'all. Wait till you see what we have coming up. Okay, y'all. So we are now outside and we are at the griddle. It feels so good today for this. It has been a year since we had fired this bad boy up. So it felt like a really good time to do this. Now, this meal was inspired by a YouTuber by the name of Hungry Hussy. And he does some amazing um griddle recipes if you want to check him out but he inspired me for tonight's meal so we and then that will be for the tacos but i am going to add a little bit to it we've never done it before so we are going to actually fire roast our jalapenos on the griddle 
we have them stuffed we're going to put them on our griddle and we are going to actually cover them and cook them out here so I have the stuffing that I had showed you and hubby's going to place them on the griddle just like so If you hear them popping. You can hear them popping. Yes, that's awesome. You may have to turn it down just a little bit. I got it down to almost on low right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're, they're rocking as they're cooking. And now we're just going to go ahead and cover these up and let them cook under there in a steam. And so our next step is to do our meat filling for our tacos. So we're going to start out with sprinkling uh, or spraying a little bit of olive oil on our griddle. And then we're going to take very fine diced onions and we're going to add our onions first. Go ahead. And we've got um, about a half of a small onion. Now this is cooking for two, y'all, so use your own discernment here. Now we're gonna add our one pound of hamburger meat to this. Go ahead and chop it up in the dough and mix it. You're gonna get this all blended together. Now we are using homemade fajita seasoning, so we're going to come in here and start seasoning up our meat. I'm not Chinese. I don't do like the Chinese do, so... <laughs> Alright, once we get this done, uh, we will be back and uh, we'll do the next step. Alright, so now we have the meat cooked. We're going to go ahead and add our cheddar cheese to this mix. And he's just going to mix it just enough to melt it. It doesn't have to be completely because we are also going to turn around and fill them and cook with the homemade tortillas as well. And then blend. It's going to blend all that up together afterwards. Just like so. We're going to go ahead and add some more in there. Because we kind of want a cheesy situation, y'all. Oh, yeah. Yum. That looks amazing. I wasn't meaning nothing bad by that while ago. It's just, they're really good at handling these. <laughs> That's why I said I wouldn't like them. Wish I could have. I could, but they're a lot better than I am. Hey, but he's doing a great job, y'all. Okay, so now we are ready to pull this off the griddle, and we're going to get ready to make our tacos. Keep it from sticking. Okay, y'all, so I'm hoping that you can see this. We are going to actually go ahead and start filling all of our tortilla shells. I'm going to go ahead and set this right here. Probably put this behind me right now. Then we're going to take our shells and fill each one with some of our meat. Just like so. Fold it over. So I kind of like a tostado like that. I'm going to take that right there and fill every one of these. We have eight corn tortillas that we're going to go ahead and fill. Flip it over, press it down, and set it aside. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of these. And when I get the rest of these filled, we'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. All right, y'all. So we got all of our tacos, tacos filled. You got your oil down here. Alright, so we kind of want these kind of like a quesadilla. You don't want to overstuff them, but we are going to stuff them with other stuff afterwards. What we're looking to do is get these a golden brown. So it's only going to be about a minute or two until they are golden brown on both sides. And now we're going to lay them on our griddle just like so. And then he'll be pressing them down with his spatula to infuse the cheese together with them. Just like that. Some of these might be just a tad bit too full. Just like that, y'all. And then we'll check them here shortly. That's because we're using homemade. Look at it. Ah, yes. Still a little bit longer. Yep. But he'll take you through the process. And what, oops, sorry about that, y'all. So what we're looking for is them to be golden brown on the bottom. Then we're going to go ahead and flip them to the other side and get that nice golden crunch. All right, y'all. One other thing that we're fixing to do that we have not tested yet in versus the store-bought using homemade masa to make tortillas uh, for my husband uh, the corn tortillas and just like we do the flour we've been usually buying the stuff from the store with all the preservatives and it would not do well in the sugar so we are going to test these and see if this will make a difference by doing the homemade version so um I'm hoping for the best on this because if this works, then we know that the dent corn that we get from Azure will also work because it's the same method and it will turn to masa just as much as us just doing what we did here with the uh, bag of masa. It's the same process on that. All right, y'all. There's the fire roasted jalapenos. Oh my God, these look and smell amazing. And there's our tacos, so let's go in and prepare our meal. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to show you how we fill our newfound tacos with our crispies. So we're going to open this up. Oh, Lord, y'all. Now we are going to use um, our spring lettuce, but you need a little bit of lettuce. Some cilantro, of course. We have our salsa, and I'll show you the finished plate when we're done. We have some fresh lime juice, y'all. Ooh, yummy. So now I'm going to take this, and we're going to cut our limes into quarters, just like so. And serve that on the side of our plate. This is going to go for our other plate. And then we have our salsa on the side, and then we dollop this with sour cream. And we're going to add just a tad bit of cheese to this. Now, you're welcome to fill these any way you want to, whatever kind of cheese that you want. That's what this is for. And then we take them and set them up in our little holders. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of our plate, and I'm going to show you our finished dinner. And that's it, y'all. Wham! There's our dinner. We have our tacos with a nice crusty outside, our salsa on the side, our beautiful fire roasted jalapenos, and our lime. We have our salsa and our homemade tortilla chips. That is our Mexican meal for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, much, much love to each and every one of you, and we'll see you again from Parton's Heritage Homestead.